Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to show you how to use the polisher to smooth your 3D prints. I've said it before that my introduction to 3D printing came from cosplay. And with cosplay, there's a lot of sanding and filling and priming, no matter what medium you're using. But with the polisher, you can knock out most of that work just by putting your part in there for half an hour with some isopropyl alcohol, and your part will come out glossy smooth. Now, you might still need to do some sanding and maybe just a small amount of filling, but it significantly decreases the work time for a printed part. So let's take a look at what exactly goes into taking a part and smoothing it with the polisher. To start off, you're gonna need a couple materials and tools. You're going to need a polisher, a well-calibrated 3D printer, Polymaker Polysmooth material, isopropyl alcohol, and paper towels to clean up any mess. Now the reason I mentioned you need a well-calibrated 3D printer is that while the polisher does smooth out your 3D prints, it's not going to remedy artifacts and major defects in the print. So if you have skipped layers or some under extrusion or infill showing through, it's not going to recover you from that, but you're at least going to smooth out some of the major stuff. Step one. Pick the right model for polishing. Now, because the polisher does smooth out the outer surface of a 3D print, that also means it's going to smooth out everything. Even if you wanted an edge to be crisp and at a sharp angle, it'll slightly round that over. Take for example, like this T-Rex skull. It's low poly, so it has a lot of sharp corners around it to give it the right look. And if that were to go in the polisher, what would happen is it would round down all of those edges. But something like these mini nukes designed by uh, Daniel Lilligreen, they are designed to be machined and manufactured within Fallout, so it doesn't matter if I lose any of those surfaces because it's authentic. It would really look like that in the game. So you do want to take some considerations into what model you're using and what features might you wear down using the polisher. Step two. Prepare your Polysmooth filament. Now Polysmooth is a PVB, which is similar to PVA, except it, instead of being reactive with water, it's reactive with isopropyl alcohol. However, I did notice that prints were coming out a little fuzzy when I took the filament out of the package and started printing with it right away. So I tried drying it just a little bit and did notice a difference in the print quality. Well, I don't specifically mention that it is hygroscopic, which means that it wants to absorb water from the air. I did notice a difference in quality when drying out the filament. Step three, printing with Polysmooth filament. Now Polysmooth prints very similarly to PLA. In fact, I use basically the same settings, changing only the print temperature from about 200 to 230 degrees Celsius, which is in the range of recommended print temperatures. Other than that, just a little bit of glue stick on the bed, didn't have any problems with warping or things like that. Printed just fine like that. Step four, using the polisher. So the polisher is pretty intuitive in that it only has a couple buttons on the front, they're all clearly labeled, but what you need to do is plug it in, turn it on, and raise the tower. Once you do that, you can lift the shield, you can pour in the alcohol where there's a little reservoir in the back. And with each polisher comes two plates. So you can set up one batch, put it in here, and prepare the second batch. So you don't have any downtime where things are trying to dry out in this and then you're trying to swap it. Just swap them out when they're done, try the next one, and you're good to go. I recommend doing about 30 minutes and pulling it a little longer or a little shorter depending on how prints are looking but there is a chamber light so you can look at it and see that it's done and you can cancel it and raise it as is, or you can add more time if it doesn't look smooth enough to you. Step five, finishing, detailing, and painting. And this is all optional. So from here, I set about finishing these models by sanding down some of the bigger imperfections that the polisher didn't get to and wearing away at any sort of supports that I left behind. From there, I gave everything a base coat in order to make it look more like metal, and then I put a clear coat over it so that when I put more paint on top, if any of that wears down, it'll show through with the metal color underneath. 
So you had to do a couple colors on different parts, some red and yellow and green. But in the end, you get a part that looks straight from the game. And that's it. Now this was a really satisfying project to work on because I got to go from filament to finished part and finished prop in a lot less time than normal. So using the polisher has significantly lowered the barrier of entry into getting finished props and finished parts. So hopefully this video has given you some ideas on how to incorporate the polisher into your workflow. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.